When there is no fruit in season, the group's diet becomes more down to earth as they dig for roots and tubers. Australopithecus are masters of the varied diet. They have a number of adaptations for feeding themselves. Hands that have become nimble and dexterous since they are no longer used for walking on. Thick enamel on their teeth to help them cope with tough or dirty food. And ingenuity. Australopithecus can use basic tools like sticks to dig. They are not born with this ability. They must learn it by imitating their elders. And in Blue's case, his lessons were far from over when his mother died. He is having to learn fast because no one else is going to feed him. There is another very important element of their diet. Meat. Out on the savannah, carrion is quick to attract scavengers. Often the Australopithecus are among them. But they have to be fast to beat the vultures. In no time at all, they are all over the zebra carcass. Once again, Hercules tries out his scare tactics to great effect. There is no clearer display of the group's hierarchy than the order they get food. Gray is used to getting the first bite, but he finds Hercules is already getting stuck in. It is nothing short of a coup. Hercules returns to the carcass as top male. At first, the group are unsure how to react to the change of leadership. Gray, meanwhile, nurses his pride in the background. Meat is only a small part of the Australopithecus diet, but it will become more important in the future for more human-like apes. An increase in meat eating will go hand in hand with an increase in brain size. Meat contains nutrients vital for big brains. Intelligent apes will develop special tools to get meat until eventually they'll make weapons and won't be scavengers, but predators. Hercules' takeover has an immediate positive effect. There is less internal conflict than there was before. But the group's biggest problem hasn't gone away. It is only a matter of time before the Dinophilus comes back. is in dire trouble. Unable to get to the tree in time, he is now an obvious target for the cat. But 
but suddenly the Australopithecus do something extraordinary. The whole group spontaneously unites and tries to turn the tables on the hunter. This is an important moment. Not only has he survived a deadly situation, something more profound has happened. He may be the lowest ranking member of this group, but he is now at least valued enough to spur them into action. It's a start. Apes have a long road to travel yet, Outwardly, they are almost human, but their brains are no bigger than a chimpanzee's. It will be at least another two million years before any ape has a decent conversation. Next time, the lost continent of South America. A world of strange exotic giants and a legendary killer. Smilodon, the largest of all the saber-toothed cats.